Hi, Jason Wood here, VA Loan Guy, host of the Armed and Ready podcast. Today's guest, Sinwai Montoya. He's going to be talking to us today about solar and his experience in the Army. Let's check it out. Jason Wood, the VA Loan Guy and host of the Armed and Ready podcast. Uh, today we have a really cool guest with us. Uh, Sinuai is here to share with us a little bit about how he works in the uh, civilian sector after uh, being in the military. So Sinuai, thanks man for carving out a little time for us today, man. I'm really excited to have you on the show. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you uh, for inviting me on. Absolutely. So um, Sinuai, you were in the Army, right? I, I was, yep. And um, you know, transition from the army to the reserves, and and now you're in the civilian world um, in um, a related industry to mine. That is, so tell me a little bit um, about you know your your time in the army. What did you do in the army, and then um, and then how did that parlay into what you do today? So you know, in the army, I uh, I was a combat engineer. Um, so you know, we were dealing with explosives, you know, learning how to set landmines and use C4 and whatnot, um, or disable explosives. And during deployment, I uh, was looking for IDs on a regular, I mean, that was our job. So on a regular basis, uh, looking for IDs. Um, I was in Iraq in uh, first tour was in 2003. Second tour was in 2005, six. And if you remember just recently, uh, Iran hit Al-Assad Air Base. Yeah. Yeah, those are my old stomping grounds. Oh my gosh. So it brought back some memories when I heard about those uh, those rockets landing. Um, but, you know, being in the military definitely sets you up for success, in my opinion, in a lot of ways, because it builds fortitude and direction and discipline in a young person, right? Right. And I went in when I was 18, and it really shaped me for being a better human being in general. Uh, but uh, once I got out of the military, um, I found myself working in the solar, well, after some time out of the military, I found myself working in the solar industry and um, I was climbing on roofs on a regular basis because I was an in-home sales guy. So I would go to your house and sit with you for however long you would let me stay in your house. Or you could get a boot or you sign a contract. Uh, not quite that pushy, but um, you know, that was uh, the way you do in-home sales, right? Right. right. And uh, I was getting on people's roofs and sometimes I'd have people asking me like, what are you doing up there? Are you going to fall? Or do you have insurance? Or are you going to damage my roof? And I'm scared of heights. I tell people because I'm five, six. So I uh, bought a drone and uh, the drone started really turning a lot more sales for me. And I was a lot more accurate with my quotes and everything that uh, I was you know, able to get with the drone. It was usually taking me about an hour on the roof, maybe 45 minutes where with the drone had taken like 15 minutes, 10 minutes to get the whole survey done. And I just realized, Hey, look, I think I have an opportunity on my hands to start a business around this and drone quote my company uh, uh, was born. Oh, that's really cool. That's cool. That trans that transition. Um, so you went from blowing stuff up basically and, and looking for explosives yeah. to, um, to, to really like visualizing somebody's roof. Um, so tell me, you know, how, how did the, the prep or the training that you got in the army, you know, um, prepare you for doing what you do today, running your own business, really? I mean, you're, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner. So what, what, are, the, what are the attributes or the things that correlate in your mind to, to military training to, to what you do today? Uh, so, you know, one of the generals in the mil in the army. I wish I remembered them verbatim, but you know, you don't, you don't, you don't quit. You don't stop. You finish your mission, right? Right. And you finish your mission, come hell or high water. And I think that was one of the biggest things that I took away from the military because I can start something and see it through to completion, with regarding uh, w without regard for how difficult it's going to be, right? Because I know that if I have an objective to meet, I'm going to meet the objective. Or no, there is no but. Or there is no, or I should say, it's just I'm going to meet an objective because that's the mission I have to accomplish. And I learned that in the military. I don't think that I would have the perseverance that I do now if I hadn't been in the military. I'd probably be more willing to give up a lot sooner on the things that are hard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with you on that. Um, so now you're in, you're in the solar industry. Um, sounds like things are, are going really well. How, how do you see, I mean, you, you deal with homeowners a lot and their, their home and in the real estate market. Um, 
How do you see the real estate market from, from your perspective as you're meeting with people and stuff like that? So, you know, one thing that I'm really mindful of when I talk to homeowners is um, I, I do what I can to set them up for success, not at the time, not only at the time of uh, acquiring the solar or a new roof, right? But if it's directly related to solar, uh, I, I do what I can to steer them away if I can, you know, if, if they're open to it from a lease. Right. Because that will be an issue potentially down the road if they go to sell or refinance the house. And more importantly, I do what I can to educate homeowners as to the detriments of using PACE financing. Yeah. And you being in your industry, you know exactly what that's about. Yeah. And for those listening that don't, it's a way that you could, it's pro property assess clean energy. And instead of buying the, the roof or the solar with, you know, a loan through the bank or through some other financial institution, it goes directly onto your tax. Uh, it's, 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 it's tax assessed. So it goes onto your property taxes. Right. And you don't need any credit to finance it, but the rates are extremely high. There's prepayment penalties. It doesn't subordinate to anything. Right. right. And that will impact a homeowner that is looking to refi or sell the home in a negative way in the future. So, you know, in terms of solar and roofing and real estate, there isn't a very direct connection, but there is an indirect connection because eventually somebody's gonna sell that house or buy the house. Right. And if I could set the homeowner up to be prepared for that transaction as best as possible, then yeah, I've, I've, done, I've done a good job, I feel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you hit, you hit the nail right on the head. I mean, the acquisition of the solar is, is so critical because I've been in, in a lot of different loan scenarios with clients and, and a few of them did pursue that PACE financing. And I mean, that is a roadblock. It most definitely is. Totally a roadblock. So, you know, pursuing another way of doing it, whether you're, you're using your, your mortgage to, to take some equity out, to buy it, um, there's solar financing that's available. I mean, there's, there's a few different avenues to, to buy them if you don't have cash to buy it. Right. And, um, such a better choice. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of solar. I've had solar in my last two homes. It's a no brainer for me because I love the air conditioning. So oh, that's why and, I did. yeah, in the summer, you know, five, $600 power bills were just not okay with my pocketbook. So, um, yeah, having solar has been a huge blessing and I'm, I'm a huge advocate of it. Um, and, and I'm sure you see, you know, returns for people, um, just in the, just in the energy savings piece of it are just exponential. Absolutely. And you know, I, I, there are very real and sizable uh, returns uh, for people that, and savings, well, I guess return savings uh, for people that install solar. But I think the biggest benefit for me is just living in your house comfortably. You know, right. you work so hard to live in San Diego and to come home to your house and be hot because you don't want to get a high power bill. It's like, it defeats the purpose of, of, you know, having a home in San Diego if you're not comfortable in your own home. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, so, so let me ask you this. So you were, you were talking to me a little bit about, about discipline. I thought this was funny and, and we should share it. Um, but you know, the discipline and stuff that you pick up from the military, which I think is kind of an, an underlying inherent theme, you know, with, with all the guests that I have on the show who are, are prior service and talking about what they do today, um, is that piece of it. But you were sharing with me something that was pretty cool. Um, and I never heard of this before. Um, but was being on social media while you're planking. And um, <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's pretty cool because, um, you know, I, there, there's a lot of talk about people just wasting time on social media, right? Just not, um, not engaging, they're just scrolling, right? And, oh, yeah. and, and, the worst. and the purpose of social media truly is, in, is to engage, right? right? And not just scroll through and look and like everything. Um, so, so tell me a little bit about your, your self-discipline with social media. Well, I used to not have any. Like, I used to not have self-discipline with social media. I would scroll. Like, I would try to find the bottom of the Facebook feed, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I heard if you go back far enough, it's black and white and in hieroglyphics. I haven't made it that far, but <laughs> I'll tell you, I got pretty close to it a few times. And I think to myself, because I'm very you know, mindful of... Uh, well, I shouldn't say mindful because I, I was aware of it, but I wasn't doing anything about it of how much screen time I was spending on social media. And I just started doing the numbers as to what else I could be doing with that time and how much of a disservice I was doing to myself because it's not impacting anybody else other than me. Right. 
and actually, and my business, I should say, if I give it too much time. So I said, look, for 2020, and I, and I, I don't like New Year's resolutions, so I usually try to start my, my New Year's resolutions, quote unquote, towards the end of November, so that I could get, try to get in the habit of, you know, whatever it is I want to accomplish when the first of the year comes around. And I didn't implement the plank system right away, but I did significantly limit how much time I was spending on social media. I think I put a, a 35 minute limit on my phone. So if I was on Facebook for more than 35 minutes in a day, I, it would cut me off. Right. But I wanted to take it a step further because I, um, overindulged during the holidays and I was looking like the Mexican Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> so I, uh, I said, look, I'm going to start. So whenever I'm at the desk, if I get out of my desk for, cause I work out of the house. Um, if I get out of my desk for anything, I do 25 repetitions of something. So I have dumbbells and like other weights and you know, I'll do push ups. And then, but I still want a social media, right? I still want a Facebook. So I said, okay, I got to limit that. So the way in which I can limit it is I will allow myself to be on Facebook as long as I want on any given day if I'm in the plank position. So I will get on Facebook in the plank position. If you see me scrolling on Facebook or post something, it's because I was on the plank position. And I was, uh, you know, I was looking at my uh, screen time for the week since Sunday. I'm at 11 minutes for Facebook and today's Wednesday, today's Tuesday. So in, in mo Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, I've got 11 minutes on Facebook of which I was in the plank position. So, you know, That's it's, awesome. uh, it's, it's something I could do for myself to better myself and, and not waste time. Yeah, no, I like it. Uh, that's really, that's really cool. Well, maybe one day you'll be up to 30 minutes a day in plank and you'll have a six pack, right? <laughs> hey, you know what? I do it. I'll, I'll be on Facebook for 30 minutes. That means I got a six pack and you know what? I'll, I'll make a challenge out of it. Watch, give me a, like a month so I could have some results because I have been eating a little bit more healthy and being more mindful of how much exercise I do. Uh, so I think by the uh, middle of next month, I was looking to see if I can have visible results. I would put it up on Facebook as a challenge and, and challenge people. Hey, get in the plank, get on Facebook. That's really cool. I like it. Um, so kind of back to your business, sorry, jumping all over the place, but back to your business a little bit. So in your solar business, you, you use the drone thing. I think that's really cool. Like to, to leverage that technology. And I remember, you know, when I got solar in my house, they didn't do anything quite that cool. Is the solar company yours or do you, do you go out and like do bids for other companies or how does that work? Yeah, so I don't own a solar company. Okay. Um, we don't install any solar. Um, so to be very frank with everybody listening, I don't have a solar installation license because I, I don't install solar. Okay. Right? Um, the salespeople that work with Drone Corps are licensed to sell solar, but they, we're not licensed to install it. So what we do is we're a broker of solar, solar and roofing. roofing. Gotcha. So if you want to buy a solar system for your home, instead of, I mean, let me ask you this. When you, had, when you installed solar in your home, you had people come to your house and sell to you right sure yeah yeah and about how long was an average sales meeting gosh hour hour and a half something yeah. like that and, and if you want three quotes you're going to do that three times it's a lot of time yeah yeah i used to do that that's what i used to do for a living when i was at baker electric which is where i used to work um and i just hated, hated the i hated taking people's time knowing that they wanted to do something else they just wanted a number for me and they wanted the benefits and then I also hated the fact that if they said, hey, I can't do business with you because I found another quote that's better, I had no recourse. So I said, look, I can do something about this. I can go on a uh, broker system, start a company that will allow me to, to, to build the company the way I want to. So what we do is we, when we receive a, uh, an opportunity with a homeowner, everything, everything is done online, everything. And it's not a sales call. It's more of a walking you through your quotes so you understand how to make sense of them and then giving you the time and space you need to make a, an educated decision. Because I'm sure that if you have factual and uh, good information in front of you, you're more than capable of making the decision that's in your best interest. Yeah. Right. So we educate people on how to make that decision and we educate them through different means. And of course with uh, quotes from different companies, and then they simply select an installer on our portal and, and, um, and that starts the process for them with that company. And you know, a call with us will take 40 minutes. Whereas, and you'll get three quotes and a better price because we don't go out to your house. So we're, we're a lot more competitive on price. We can afford to undercut the competition because I have three opportunities to get that customer and I'm not spending the resources in sending, sending sales guys out to your house. Yeah. You just cut that cost altogether, which is nice. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. And you know, I've actually, I've had a few deals, um, which I'm going to stick to my pricing, but I had this one particular deal. It was a pretty big deal in Phoenix. The guy was like, I don't understand why your quotes are all so low. I just can't 
I can't make this work because there's got to be something wrong. And I'm like, dude, there's nothing wrong. It's just that we're completely cutting out how much commission that a sales guy can, can bring in uh, because we don't need that. We're not trying to get rich off every single quote. We're trying to build it on volume. We are building it on volume. I shouldn't use the word trying. We are building it on volume and we're closing the majority of the opportunities that we get. That's really cool. So, so are you nationwide then? Uh, we, I mean, we sell in uh, eight different states. Okay. So as far as that is defined by nationwide, I would say yes. But, you know, to say in every state, not, not quite there yet. What states are you in right now? Um, Arizona, uh, Florida, Texas, Colorado, uh, California, uh, New Jersey, um, uh, Utah, and Illinois. That's eight states. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And so um, how do people find you? What's the best way to jump on your website? Yeah. So if anybody's interested in finding us, you know, drone quote dot net. Uh, the guy that has the dot com wants an absurd amount of money. money so. <laughs> As they all do, right? Yeah, seriously. Um, you know, a funny story there for anybody listening and starting a business. You know, if you have, an, a, if you have somebody that's squatting on your website, because this guy was squatting on drone quote. Um, yeah, he had a whole drone like page as, as a, like a, a holding page, if you will. Wow. And I trademarked drone quote and then I hit him with a uh, cease and desist. And the uh, GoDaddy, who his, uh, whoever has the, the domain holder um, has to oblige by the cease and desist because I had proof that I had the trademark. So oh. anybody out there that's listening that has a, a, a company name or a business idea name that they want to uh, trademark and they do trademark it and somebody else is squatting on that domain, you can hit them with a cease and desist, not to them personally, but to the domain holder and, and they'll, they'll oblige. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's about 250 bucks with uh, the cost of trademarking. That's super valuable information. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Uh, he was uh, rather shocked. I remember he called me and he tried to sell it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a, a good, you know, run. We've had, we started in 2017. Anybody else out there listening and start looking to start a business? You know, I thought I knew what my business was going to be when I started it. Right. I was like, oh, I got this business plan and like, I'm going to be living in Rancho Santa Fe in like six weeks. It's going to be great. <laughs> well, your business model is, you know, one thing, but it's reality that hits you in the face and you have to change things. You have to pivot, right? right. Uh, which is another thing that the military taught me. You know, I can adjust accordingly without being stuck in something uh, too long. Uh, but my business model came together once I actually started business. It wasn't until then that I knew exactly how things were going to unfold. So just for everybody out there that's thinking of starting a business, I know that you have a plan and you should just be open to changing that plan because reality is sometimes different than what you anticipate. Totally. Yeah. And, and just act, just start. Right. Oh, that's it. That, that's the biggest, uh, when was it? I, I don't remember who said this. You don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be great to start. You, you have to be, Oh, you don't have to start to be great. You just have to be, what am I trying to say is if you start, you don't have to be great at it, but starting will allow you to get to the greatness that you achieve for or that you strive for. Right. You know, so you don't have to be great at something. Just start. It'll come. Yeah. No, that's all. That's, that's good advice. Well, um, I think on that note, we'll end it, you know, to, um, you don't have to be great to start, but start to be great. Right. Um, right. Um, a senior, I, I, I really appreciate you carving out some time for us today. Um, and sharing a little bit about your story, you know, one veteran to another. I appreciate, you know, your service to our country and, um, and, and we thank you, man. It was really great to, to talk with you and learn about your business and, and your transition. So I um, appreciate it very much. Thanks again. Yeah, I appreciate uh, you having me on. And again, for anybody out there listening, if you have a moment, you know, check us out at dronequote.net. Uh, you can find me, you can find us on Facebook at the drone quote. Um, you can find me at smontoya at dronequote.net. And, you know, I make myself available to anybody that is looking for, to, to speak about anything pretty much. Awesome, man. All right. Well, thanks again. Have an awesome day, bud. You as well. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for stopping by today and listening to our podcast. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at valoanguy.us.